What's up, everyone? This is Josh from East West Healing. Today, I want to talk about the underappreciated, thyroid supportive, fat soluble vitamin A, aka retinol. But before we jump in, as always, please like our video, show us a little support, and please subscribe to our channel, hit that notification button. So every single Wednesday, every single Wednesday without fail, we put out a video, you get notified. Let's jump in. Now, when it comes to the thyroid, things like selenium, iodine, tyrosine always get all the fame, right? Why? I don't know. I don't know the answer to this, except, of course, my perception is just complete laziness. Everyone just wants to focus on supplements. Instead of eating selenium-rich foods, we take a supplement. Instead of eating retinol-rich food, we take a supplement. Instead of eating vitamin D-rich foods, we take a supplement. And we like to nitpick the processes of how the thyroid works. And, and look at the, 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 the bits and pieces of it without understanding the whole process and how it starts and how it goes through and how it ends. We're just looking at, oh, well, the thyroid uses iodine, so we need iodine. Oh, tyrosine's, in, tyrosine's involved, so we need tyrosine. And the problem is too little iodine and too much can cause a whole array of symptoms. We don't recommend using iodine. You can get it from foods like shrimp and cod and, 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 and different types of shellfish and, and eggs and dairy, right? And seaweed, of course, but we don't need to be taking the supplement. Same thing with vitamin A supplements. They're all synthetic, number one. Number two, we can get it from a fatty fish, herring, mackerel, salmon, etc., as well as dairy and eggs and organ meats, especially like uh, beef liver, chicken liver, and cod liver. Those are great sources of retinol. So nature always provides us with what we, what we need, but the problem is, do we want to eat the foods or are we just going to try to eat the synthetic supplement that's not regulated by the FDA and most of the time it's just junk, right? And this is why we're seeing this. We're seeing this and I feel like the bubble is getting bigger and it's about to burst where people are just overloaded with supplements. Their cabinets are overflowing and nothing is really working and we're seeing that the, the approach of, you know, what Western medicine does of doing a lab and taking a medication, what's transferred to functional medicine, which doesn't work, right? It's the same thing philosophically of doing a lab and taking a supplement. It doesn't work. If anything, it's actually the same or even worse, right? So we have to really look at the food. Now, when we talk about retinol, why is it so important when we talk about the thyroid? Well, here we go. Well, first of all, without retinol, we don't have bioavailable copper. Bioavailable copper is called ceruloplasmin. It's a protein. It's produced in the liver. Um, why? Because we store copper in the liver from the second we're born that was downloaded from our parents, of course, possibly from the foods we eat too as we grow, but copper is stored there. Well, copper has to be kind of transported or shuttled or grabbed onto and loaded into what's called ATP 7A and B. Right? And that's what loads copper onto ceruloplasmin. In a sense, you can call it copper metabolism, just to simplify it, right? So retinol is the key. Without retinol, we can't shuttle copper into ATP 7 A and B to kind of produce ceruloplasmin, which is that active copper, right? The copper that we can use to produce tons of copper and antioxidants, the copper we can use to activate oxygen, right? And the copper that we can use, ceruloplasmin, to activate TRH. So we can produce, stimulate TSH, so we can produce thyroid hormone. The CP or ceruloplasmin or bioavailable copper that we need to actually convert thyroid hormone from inactive T4 to active T3. And the type of copper that we need to produce specific enzymes like TPO and dual oxidase enzyme. So when we talk about the thyroid, copper or retinol, whatever you want to call it, plays a huge, huge role. And the question we have to ask ourselves is a thyroid issue, we'll just kind of group it as that, um, truly a vitamin A or AKA copper deficiency. And I truly believe it can be for a lot of people. Now, there's a lot of different instances because some people have been on medications for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And unfortunately, I don't want to say the damage is done, but you kind of teach your body to need it. So a lot of the times you just have to create a foundation to support it and ride the wave and say, okay, at least I feel better, I still need it, or I feel better and I can handle less that's a win. But there are a lot of people that can actually do a lot of great things and go off their medication. Just a little tangent here. I have a client from far, far away, different country who came to me with high antibodies, high TSH, um, etc. And 
through just using food, she was able to lower the antibodies, lower the TSH, and regulate all her thyroid hormones, right? Medication isn't always needed because when we look at it, a lot of the times it's a, it's a, it's a functional hypothyroid issue, right? There's an HPA stress, there's a copper deficiency, retinol deficiency, linen deficiency, there's, there's stress in the system, cortisol blocking T4 to T3. So it's really not the thyroid that's a problem, just like Hashimoto's. It's an immune system issue. It's not a thyroid issue, right? So we know, right, why we need retinol for copper and what copper or ceruloplasma does for TRH, conversion of T4 to T3 and production of TPO. To bring this point a little further, and of course, you can always check the description because I always post a lot of information in there about exactly what I'm saying. Our thyroid grabs iodine from the foods that we eat, right? Different shellfish, the cod, the shrimp, the dairy, the eggs, etc. Everyone thinks it's just seaweed. It's not just seaweed, right? We can get it from a lot of the different foods. And if you eat pro-metabolically and you eat from nature, you're going to get it. You don't have to worry about taking it. No one, no one should be supplementing with iodine. So our thyroid grabs iodine from the foods that we eat. The iodide is actually oxidized by TPO. Remember what produces TPO, right? Or it kind of helps to activate it. That is ceruloplasmin, right? So that iodide is uh, oxidized by TPO into iodine. That iodine or those molecules from oxidation meet up with tyrosine and thyroglobulin, which produce our precursors T1 and T2, which eventually become T3 and T4. So the whole point in this process, without going super deep, is this. Without retinol, you can't metabolize copper. And without that ceruloplasmin, you can't really activate thyroid hormone. You can't convert thyroid hormone, right? And you can't oxidize that iodide into iodine to help you produce essentially T3 and T4 down the pathway. So without retinol, without copper, none of this would happen. So the question is, why is selenium? Why is tyrosine? Why is sugar? Why is everything getting all the praise? When we look at it, the missing link is really retinol. Because without retinol, you can't stimulate TRH. You can't stimulate TSH. You can't produce thyroid hormone. You can't convert thyroid hormone. It is impossible, right? So I think we have to dive a little bit deeper. Now, the question is always, you know, what should I do? Now, of course, there's things that are blocking factors. A lot of people are taking, you know, birth control pills, certain medications. They're taking synthetic supplements like iron and D and calcium and A um, and zinc, right? Um, they're eating certain foods like GMO foods, glyphosate. Uh, they're eating high fructose corn syrup, certain foods that are blocking copper metabolism. So I think the first step is really eliminating those things or eliminating the things that you're comfortable with. I'm not telling you to go off your SSRI. I'm not telling you to go off your medication, but you have to understand that everything we put in our mouth has a consequence. And sometimes those consequences are very, very deep because anytime you mess with copper metabolism, you not only mess with thyroid metabolism, you mess with energy or ATP production, antioxidant production. And essentially what you're doing in the end is you're pushing your body towards oxidative stress, inflammation, and calcification, which is a little forest fire <clears throat> or a camping fire that turns into a 500,000 acre forest fire. You're pushing yourself towards inflammation. The step after that would be start to eat retinol rich foods, right? Your, your organ meats, your fatty fishes, your dairy your eggs, start to eat copper rich foods like your organ meats, your shellfish, these are all the proteins that people need to eat. And I've been saying this for 22 years, right? Everyone is, everyone overeats carbs, right? Yes, there's some populations that overeat protein, right? Or, or all they focus on is protein. But I think for the general population, if people would just swap their grains and, and, and processed carbs out for more fruits, roots, and squashes, and they started to eat more protein other than just chicken and eggs, a lot of people would see a shift. If we started to eat more muscle meats, you know, lambs and things like that. If we started to eat more dairy, if you can, you know, broth, fatty fish, white fish, shellfish, organ meats, I guarantee a lot of you would see a change. Now, remember this, when it comes to minerals and vitamins in the body, it takes time to replenish those. Just because you're eating liver or you're taking a liver supplement, you've been doing it for three months, doesn't mean you're going to replenish. It took me three and a half years to replenish my minerals and to replenish my vitamins based on labs. So it takes time. So just ride the wave. But I think it comes down to, of course, the food, you know, how do we get these foods, but eliminating the blocking factors, but also looking at your life and saying, what is really 
not working for me? How do I change my lifestyle, my rhythms, my work schedule, my me time, my hobby time, my sleep schedule? Over time, this doesn't happen overnight because the more we can set the foundation on our lifestyle, the more we reduce our stress, the better those food choices are going to work because now they have something to work from. So hopefully this video makes sense. As always, if you have questions, put them in the comments. Thank you for tuning in. Always thank you for your support. I'm out.